Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, I don't have to tell you what your parents told you back in the day, and it still holds true. You have to eat right. You have to eat healthy. And that's for everything. Physically, mentally, your well-being, it's, it's all there. The challenge is, what are you supposed to eat? Especially in our society today, where the foods that we grab and go, because we're so busy, aren't good for you. They're overprocessed. A lot of garbage going on in there. Have you ever thought about how that affects you mentally? We're going to look at that today and a lot more. He is somebody who offers uh, many different types of therapy, many uh, different forms of psychiatry. That's why we're talking about this today, because it's so important. A lot of people don't talk about the psychology behind food. Dr. David Lifshutz is back with us. How are you today? I'm great. Great. Good to see you, Steve. You too. Yeah, this... I've wrestled with this for the last year and change as I try to change my eating, eating habits, um, just be, be uh, just better food. But then once you start going down this rabbit hole, you start realizing what's out there is so not good for you in terms of how food is processed, pesticides. Yeah, you go into the supermarket, you make that left because it's usually on the left. And then you start produce. I want our fruits, vegetables. Wonderful except it's loaded with pesticides. Um, for the state of food today, why don't we start there? What, what's your overall okay. thoughts? My overall thought is we're being poisoned by sugar. Mm. Sugar, and I just listened to, um, there's a wonderful uh, woman biochemist, and she has a book under glucose. I don't remember the name of the book. She's French, but it's... the not the glucose queen, but she's glucose, something like that. And I'm sorry, I don't remember. But anyway, the problem is that about oh, 100 years, and that's not 100 years ago, maybe 40 or 50 years ago, um, a couple of scientists from Harvard came out with a paper showing that animal fat is very good for you and sugar is poison. Mm. And the people who were on top of the food industry found out about their paper and paid them what then might have been $50,000 a piece to change the paper and say that carbohydrates and sugar was good for you, but animal fats were bad for you. And then we had a pandemic of heart attacks. It's amazing how, when this stuff gets out, how we react to it. So yeah, to your point, there was that the word, the, the word fat. It's essential in your diet, but that right. word got out there in a negative marketing form. So it's like, oh, no, no, low fat, low fat, low fat. Same thing with eggs. Eggs are bad for you. Cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol. You need cholesterol to make hormones. <laughs> right. And, and if you don't have, you know, genetically high cholesterol where it's too high, and also you can't go by just general, the total cholesterol on the blood uh, test. Because that means nothing. It's the kind of cholesterol. And some cholesterol are big fluffy molecules that sail through your arteries without a problem. Another kind of cholesterol is small, tiny, dense particles, and they get inside the lining of your arteries and cause arteriosclerosis. That's bad for you. But you got to know which one is high and which one's low. Also, what's very important is that now, animal fat is good for you. Um, sugar, and for example, eating a, a sugar breakfast or cereals with lots of sugar, or even with carbohydrates are terrible for you because carbohydrates immediately turn into sugar. And sugar in your body, you know when you caramelize something in the kitchen? Sure. Or you cook a, a chicken and it turns brown? Yeah, yeah. You have too much glucose. That's what it does to the cells in your body. And when they turn brown is when they die. And when you age, that's one of the things that happens to your cells. So just a brief thing. If, for example, if you eat sugar for breakfast, you're better off eating protein for breakfast and no carbs or just a little bit. Because when you eat sugar for breakfast, it all of a sudden, even cereals, they say are health cereals. 
if they have carbohydrates in them, you get a gl glucose spike in your bloodstream. Mm. And then you get insulin pouring out. The pancreas says, oh my God, we got to deal with the sugar because there's too much. It can't go in the liver because it's overloaded already. So then what happens is the insulin pours out, the sugar goes down, and then it goes down so low, you start to feel hungry again in an hour. So you need another snack. And what do you go for? Sugar. You know, because you always want a sweet snack. And then the insulin pours out again. After you get a glucose spike, the insulin pours out to drop it down. And then you feel hungry again. Whereas if you eat a protein breakfast, it could be eggs, it could be bacon without sugar, it could be meat. Um, and then you're fine. You can be good for four hours. Also, no juices, because juices are pure sugar. When you eat an orange, there's a lot of fiber in there, and that slows down the absorption. But when you eat um, juice, it's pure sugar, and you get a glucose spike. Also, a lot of our fruits now are all genetically bred to be sweeter because they want to sell more. And the food industry is poisoning us by putting sugar in everything so we can sell more and make more money. At whose expense? Ours. I just had a patient talk oh, to this morning. David, you're, you're, you're crushing. <laughs> you're crushing me here. Um, I was not aware that genetically they're changing what we're eating. Look at blueberries. Look how big they are now. When, when you were a kid, did you see blueberries that fat and sweet? There it's even a separate uh, container of blueberries. I just saw this at the grocery store where they tote, look, big fat, these are the big fat blueberries, twice the size of the other blueberries. Uh, and I just thought, well, you know, I guess that they found, you know, certain type of trees that have them. It's, wow, wow. Genetically bred, so they have more sugar in them. So you'll buy more. Blueberries are wonderful for you. They really are. Oh. But you can't eat too many of them because it's too much. You don't want too much sugar. And um, what's going on is once they found that they could make sugar and manufacture it, and they found they could put it in food, it's over-processed foods. And um, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about it where you can learn a lot about it. Um, there's a, a another scientist wrote a book called Metabolical. Metabolical. Another great book put out by a Harvard psychiatrist is Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind. I just started to tell you about a patient of mine who I told about uh, changing their diet, not eating too much sugar and eating mostly protein and um, even mm. getting like a ketone diet. That's very popular these days. And he said his head after three days of not eating any carbohydrates or keeping your carbohydrates down to maybe more, not more than 20 milligrams a day, his head was clearer. He felt better. Wow. Think more clearly. And he's an investment banker, this guy. So he needs to think clearly. Well, we all need to think clearly. But wow. if you cut down your carbohydrates, you also, that's the way to lose weight painlessly generally and you also find out i did it myself and i found out um i wasn't hungry for like i this morning for breakfast i had a hamburger just the meat and three eggs you'll say oh my god that's too many eggs no it's fine you can have mm. up to i think 60 percent of your weight in milligrams of protein a day it's probably more than that hey, but, yeah i want to you know, on the protein thing i've been on the protein david the protein bandwagon for decades friends have made fun of me i have one friend right now that you know will go out to eat oh make sure you get no protein i'm like yeah that's right and for breakfast then i've been having i rotate it but i have three to four turkey meatballs that's and great. I, and I can eat it every day because I never get tired of it. A little dollop, if you will, of marinara sauce, tiny bit, and half an English muffin because I feel that I should get some carbs there. But based on what you're saying, you can leave them out. You can leave them out. Yeah. I don't want, you know, the, the thing that I uh, challenges me and I want your feedback, and I know it probably challenges others, without enough carbs, a headache, you'll get some get a headache and maybe, maybe you just have to get over the hump. Well, if you're going to go totally no carbs and no sugar, then you should get something called um, 
Keto Mojo is a website, keto-mojo, and you can get a, 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 a thing that helps you test your system for ketones and glucose. Oh. But it's good to have, if you're not going to go totally ketone, then you have 20, not 20, more than 20 milligrams of um, carbohydrates a day. But you'll find if like you have protein in the morning, a savory breakfast, you will be good for four hours and not be hungry at all. Hmm. After my breakfast this morning, I'm still not hungry. I ate at six o'clock. Wow. One o'clock. Yeah. You could also like uh, Dr. Boz is another person. If you're interested in learning about ketone diets, B O Z. She's a lovely internist who's very smart and is tells you about the safety involved. Um, there are other people, but you can learn about this, and it's very important. The, the book I just told you about, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind, is a wonderful book because it's very it talks about the safety involved. It talks about how a lot of people get sick from eating overproduced foods with too much sugar in them, and God knows what else they put in them. Uh, mm. A lot of people recommend, if you're looking at um, cal uh, what's in a, a an object in the supermarket, if you see a word you don't understand, don't buy it. It may well be sugar. And you know, even to your point here, I started uh, artificial sweetener. I don't put any sweeteners in anything. I don't even use salt. Um, stevia. So stevia is great. However, <laughs> there's yeah. one kind of stevia you should get. Because some of the others have sugar in it. Thank you for saying that. That's that's where I was stevia going with that. Stevia in the raw. Stevia in the raw is the one is the one I know that has no added sugar in it. Okay, because I've I've this is what I was thinking. Oh, eh, add a little sweetness with my decaf coffee there at the convenience store. Let me use the stevia, and then I'm thinking it's it, it, all, all good except it's not created equally. If you look at it, it's got stevia and some t other uh, rose. So dextrose or something. Yeah, something the oses like are sugars. Yeah, yeah. And also you should know that um, in fruits, what makes it sweet is fructose. So fruits have a molecule called sucrose, but sucrose is made up of a molecule of glucose, which does not taste sweet, and a molecule of fructose. But sucrose is, I mean, glucose is the bad one because too much glucose is what gives you diabetes, mm. is the one that insulin reacts on. And I just thought of her name, Glucose Goddess yeah. is the book she writes. And she is wonderful because she gives you hacks. She One way to avoid this in restaurants, restaurants give you bread first. Why? Because Bread turns immediately into glucose. You get an insulin spike, and it makes you hungrier for the food that's coming. It's that happened really, in a couple always, of minutes. Yeah. I, I always wondered why they would give us bread because it's free. Why would they want to fill you up? And they to, want as soon as, this is my understanding, and please share, as soon as the bread touches your saliva, it's already starting the chain reaction to turn it into sugar. Absolutely. And then what you should do in terms of, she says, the glucose goddess says, what you should do is eat vegetable first and then protein. And by that time, you have so much uh, food in your system, you can have a sweet dessert because it'll slow down the absorption of the sugar and it won't get this uh, glucose spike. I want to, speaking so, of, I want to share this because you brought back a memory. Sure. This goes back to when I was 30. Never, never forget it. Didn't know about this whole thing, protein, how important it is. And I you know, get up in the morning, do morning radio. I'd have that roll with the butter. I have whatever it might be for lunch, a donut, whatever. So one day, all of that followed by dinner at an Italian restaurant, pasta, followed by sweet sugary dessert w felt okay went home passed out in the bathroom wow actually hit my head on the sink had glasses on fell back didn't get hurt but it I, I woke up and you know just shakes like it was just a shock to my body went to the doctor um 
the complete workup, everything turned out, you know, no, they didn't find anything. And I believe it was because I spiked so high in terms of what we're talking about. And it wasn't long after where I was going fishing with a friend and we stopped at a convenience store and I got a about meat sandwich and ate it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better now. Ah, protein. That's what that's what it was. And that's why I was stuck. I've been stuck on protein ever since. But to illustrate your point, I have to believe I must have went so high in glucose and then drop so fast also the artificial sweeteners are not good for you the only thing that is passable is stevia without sugar in it but the others are really bad for your system they make you feel like you've um, you know had sugar um also diet soda is not good for you and regular soda is definitely not good for you um, and the other myth is, oh, caffeine is bad for you. Most of the time, caffeine is good. Coffee is good for you. Coffee has a lot of other molecules in it that are also good for you. But for adults, apparently the current thinking is cow's milk is not good for adults. Mm. So they recommend black coffee. So that's what I drink. There you go. <laughs> sometimes i'll put a little you know just a drop or two of uh of milk in there honestly not even so much for the flavor just to cool it off because i want to drink it right away yeah, but even um, you know you get used to it i get used to it i've had trouble not putting milk in it because i like the flavor of it but i'm finding out it's not so good for you wow um and th this is to your point once you get in the habit of these things I've haven't used salt in in fifty years. I don't even yeah. I don't even but touch you need it. salt. I mean, we, that... but yes, but it, it's it's in everything we eat anyway. Typically, unless you're cooking and you need to add a little right. bit in there. Over processed foods. Yeah, that's the problem. And a lot of people can't afford to eat natural foods because they're ex more expensive. They make the over processed foods cheap, so people will buy them. This is all about money. This isn't about what's good for you. Mm. The, the old diet triangle was promoted by the food industry and not by dietitians. That's mm. why the book um, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind is so good because it talks about that. And the book Metabolical talks about it. Mm. How interesting is, is it that when we're tired, we crave sweets? Because it gives you a sugar high. And what's a sugar high? It triggers dopamine production, which is what gives us pleasure in sex. It gives us pleasure in all kinds of other things. And it, it's what makes people addicted to things, dopamine release. Wow. Is it the same thing? Like, let's, let's say you're not tired, but you just crave, you know, yeah, I, I, I want that ice cream. I want this. I want that. Is That's it the sugar addiction. Okay. Is it doing something with dopamine at the same time? Yeah. Okay. But also it's terrible for you. You find when you don't eat, when I haven't had carbs for like three weeks now, but I'm watching it. I'm monitoring it because you'd want to be careful when you're doing this. You really want to, I want to emphasize, you should get a monitor if you're going to go all the way and you should learn about this. Don't just jump into it because it could be dangerous, but um mm. I think uh, I, I remember. I don't remember where it was, but you got to monitor it. And um, but that's it's dopamine because sugar triggers dopamine, but it also isn't good for you. But How many carbs? What, what's your intake daily, David? What do you think? My intake lately, I've been monitoring my glucose and my ketone level, and I'll eat a breakfast like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll order the meat from some place where they have grass-fed animals. And I just eat kosher meat because it's uh, I was raised that way. But um, and then I might have uh, late in the afternoon, I might have a can of sardines. Sometimes I might have a another meat, like maybe a small steak for dinner. And that's it. So no carbs here. No carbs. And wow. what happens after three days of very low or no carbs is you realize that you're not hungry. Before, I would be hungry for, I need a mint, or I need something sweet, 
or I need sugar in my coffee. And that's the sugar addiction. Now mm -hmm. you go, I had breakfast at uh, early this morning and I'm not very hungry now at all. After those th th the three days, what did you feel, you know, during that period? Oh, you may, that's what I wanted to talk about. They talk about the keto ketone flu. What happens is when the body changes over from burning glucose for energy to burning ketones for energy, you feel a little fluish, which is why you have to do this slowly and take your time. And you should learn about it, which is why I'm recommending these books. Or And also um, online, YouTube. Look at the Dr. Boss, especially we'll talk about it. And there are some others. There's a, a gentleman from uh, Duke University, I think his name is Eric. I'll, I'll give it to you to give the audience. Sure. Because I don't remember his name. But he said, the best way to lose weight is keep your carbs below or at 20 milligrams or below 20 milligrams a day, and you will lose weight. There's nothing tricky about it. There's nothing fancy. Just watch and do it very carefully and you will lose weight. I've lost 10 pounds in two weeks on this diet. Wow. wow. And it's mostly fat because what happens is you also have to work out. Working out is very important because the most important um, area of your body is muscles and muscle mass because that's where you make energy. Mm. And... Uh um, and that's why uh, my doctor wanted me to be on Ozempic. And I didn't want to do it because I said, you know, one of the side effects of Ozempic, and people don't think about this, is pancreatitis or gastric blockade, which needs surgery sometimes. And pancreatitis is serious, even though it's rare. But I said, I'll try doing it in my diet. And I did. Did your doctor suggest that because you, you wanted um, to lose I weight? I was borderline type 2 diabetic. Okay. My AC1 uh, was high, was just on the edge. And I didn't want that either. Gotcha. Yeah. It, um, it, it's amazing. All of our challenge, health, not all, but most of our health challenges is really coming down to what we eat. We don't realize what's going on there. Um, right. I have to tell you, David, I, I didn't know you ran this deep when it comes to nutrition, the psychology of nutrition. Um, final question. We didn't hit it. Might be rhetorical, but I'm curious. Sure. You're, you're walking into the grocery store. Organic. Organic is good because organic means you don't have a lot of the pesticides. If you can grow your own, it's even better. Sure. It's like this patient of mine this morning was telling me, you know, the, he grows, they grow some fruit in their backyard. They live out in Jersey. And he said, you know, I look at the fruits I grow or my wife grows in the garden and they're a lot smaller and not as sweet as what you buy in the market. Mm. <laughs> so twofold, you have less sugar in them, not in organic. In organic, they still may overproduce them, but you don't have the pesticides. So you're right. Mm. Organic is better if you can afford it. But if you can't afford it, there are cuts of meat you can get that are less expensive. But you also have to know that a lot of times hot dogs have sugar in them. Wow. Along with every other chemical <laughs> under the sun. Well, some of them don't have chemicals. I was ordering from uh, this mm. place called Grow and Behold and online. And um, I thought, oh, I could get hot dogs from there and I'd be fine because they don't have a lot of other things in them that might not be good for you. But I looked at the ingredients, they have sugar in them. So I said, no. I was not aware of that. And when I was a kid, my and I, I was uh, I was a fat kid that got bullied. All I ate was hot dogs, bologna, milk and anything hostess. I'm not exaggerating. That's pretty no. much that was my kid diet. That's but, why you were a fat kid. A hundred percent. Also, if. You know, there are a lot of fat kids nowadays, and the yep. reason is over-processed foods. Yep. Because parents have trouble, unless they really know about this, of telling their kids, no, they'll say, oh, they'll grow out of it. They won't grow out of it. There are now a lot of kids with type yeah. 2 diabetes. Yeah.
Yeah. And um, parents, you know, busy and just want their kids to be happy. So it's like, ah, oh, I'll get it for you. At least you're eating. Um, we're out of time today. Uh, wonderful, David, talking about this. Uh, learned a lot. And it also backed up, you know, some thoughts I had, and I'm sure others have had about what's out there, our food chain and how it affects us psychologically. Um, how do we find you? What's the best way? Best way is call my office. Uh, 212-529-2733. I will get back to you. Or my website is creativehealingpsychiatry.com. And you can go on there and you can contact me through there. And I'm happy to hear from people. And uh, I will talk to you for five, 10 minutes. And uh, if you want to make an appointment, I also do ketamine um, assisted psychotherapy, which helps enormously for various types of psychiatric uh, diagnoses. Your practice includes the word creative. And now I see why after today's thought uh, talk, how there is creativity in terms of your life, your diet, just get a little creative and get healthy at the, at the same time. Thank you so much for being here today and uh, looking forward next time we catch up. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.